With more media giants dealing with unprofitable streaming arms, fewer consumers may be willing to shell out some money for pay TV bundles. Investors are left wondering if more consolidation is going is still in the cards. Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav telling reporters at the Sun Valley Conference, quote, over the next year or two, you're going to see some real consolidation, whether that happens with companies buying each other or going after streaming together. For more on the landscape for the media industry, we want to bring in Rich Greenfield. He's Lightshed Partners, partner and media and technology analyst. Rich, it's great to have you back. So let's start there with consolidation. My question to you, is consolidation necessarily the answer here for companies that are struggling and why or why not? Well, look, you know, I think everyone talks about consolidation because they are struggling to really have their streaming apps be used you know the, the amount of usage of applications like peacock or paramount plus or even max pales in comparison to what is happening at netflix let alone youtube those are the industry leaders i mean in fact the piece we put out yesterday netflix and youtube represent 45 percent, over 45 percent of all time spent streaming on a television that's just you know two players dominating no one ever dominated linear tv the way netflix and youtube dominate streaming tv mm. and that's a huge problem and consolidation helps a little bit but the reality is these companies need to invest in a tremendously larger amount of content and drive people through technology algorithms really invest heavily to get people to spend more time because right now the big problem they're they're, they're facing people just don't watch these things a whole heck of a lot hmm. it's interesting since you bring up youtube i'm gonna go in on this because uh there's this regulation question and question about whether or not consolidation is going to be tough given regulation but then you've got this giant streamer of youtube which is obviously connected to alphabet to what extent do you think youtube is at a particular risk given that well, look, we made a prediction that no major M&A would happen this year. And I think that's what's played out. You know, I don't I think m m any form of consolidation will likely wait until next year until we see what happens from a regulatory standpoint. I mean, obviously, a change in administration. I know there's lots of views on whether J.D. Vance is a Lena Khan fan or not. But like, leave, leave that aside. In general, the Republican Party should be more pro consolidation, maybe not so much pro tech. I mean, we'll see. Obviously, um, former President Trump has certainly made some pretty aggressive comments about his feelings on Facebook and Zuckerbucks. But, um, you know, the, the reality is, I do think you're going to see forms of consolidation. Maybe big media companies can't merge, but could TV stations like transactions? You're going to see, a, a, I think, a much, much more intense M&A season if Republicans take control of the White House, let alone um, significant parts of Congress. These companies need it. Linear TV is dying. Consolidation won't fix the problems, but they'll certainly create more cost savings and slow the bleeding that is happening and accelerating as we speak. On YouTube specifically, look, you know, there's uh, YouTube is getting stronger and stronger, and there's lots of government investigations, obviously, from an antitrust standpoint. We'll see if those continue under a new administration. But, you know, YouTube is the juggernaut. YouTube is getting stronger and stronger. I mean, the fact that YouTube is 25 percent of all time spent streaming should scare every media executive and media investor that's watching this. Rich, let's talk about some of those critical deals as, as these companies are trying to do all they can to get more uh, eyeballs on their screens. And, and we got to talk about Warner Brothers Discovery, the NBA rights, where exactly that stands. It looks like maybe TNT Network could be out. My question to you is, how detrimental is that to Warner Brothers business? How dire is it for the company's bottom line? And do you think there's any chance that they come back here to the NBA with a better offer? I don't, you know, look. Maybe the NBA will ultimately pay them to go away so they don't sue. But I don't believe that Warner Brothers really wants to spend one point eight plus billion dollars on a rights package for a much smaller package with less playoff games than they have now. Uh, I think the reality is, look, there is a, a a pretty vicious debate among investors. Is losing the NBA catastrophic 
for WBD because they're at risk of getting dropped by distributors, whether it's a YouTube TV or a Comcast. Will this sort of be the end of, of carriage for this company, or at least a significant haircut to carriage? Or is saving a billion plus dollars a year, they currently spend about a billion three on the NBA, is saving that money and redeploying it into other places actually going to be a positive financial transaction? There's a pretty vicious debate. I think time will tell. It'll really depend on what other rights the WBD team is able to acquire. You've seen them do some small deals like college football playoffs. Nothing terribly meaningful so far, but there are rights like UFC coming available. There are other things coming available over the next few years. It'll be interesting to see how aggressive they are if they do, in fact, as we believe, stand down from the NBA. Okay, forgive me for this question. Uh, I live in a household with an NBA fan, but I'm not personally staying up to watch the games. <laughs> Is the lack of clarity around where exactly you can find these games a headwind now that kind of dilutes the value, or is that a personal problem for me? You know, I guess from your personal problem standpoint, you know, the NFL is in many different places. You know, the NFL has been a master of slicing and dicing. There's games, you know, obviously now on Amazon and NBC and Fox and CBS and YouTube TV or YouTube has Sunday Ticket. I mean, there's the, the NFL app has mobile games like there's a lot of different places for NFL content. And yet the consumer seems pretty adept at navigating that. I, I don't think having Having three primary partners, we're talking about having, you know, NBC uh, having games, Amazon and ESPN keeping games. I don't think that's too confusing. I have to give consumers credit. They're pretty good at finding content uh, on these digital platforms. I think the NBA and, you know, I think Adam Silver deserves a lot of credit for despite the challenges facing the media space, you know, the way you started off this this discussion, despite all of those challenges, getting a pretty dramatic increase in, in the fees being paid for licensing the NBA content. You know, Adam Silver probably becomes one of the stars of 2024 in figuring out how to navigate a very challenging landscape successfully. Rich, while we have you, we're going to hear from Netflix here. My question to you is, as, as we get into earnings season for these media companies, how much, what are you expecting to hear from Netflix? What's the biggest question going into that report? And do you think we could extrapolate anything from Netflix in terms of the overall health of the sector? Or is Netflix really by far just the massive leader in this space and, and they don't need to be too worried about the competition at this point? Well, when you saw Netflix in Cannes at the Cannes Lion Festival with their, you know, big setup on the rooftop of a hotel overlooking all of the Quasset, like it's hard not to think that like, you know, the new giant entering the space of advertising is Netflix. And so I think every every investor is going to be interested in what is happening at Netflix on the advertising front, how fast is it growing? They're investing far more aggressively in their own ad technology now. And so I think that's going to be what probably, you know, and, and is that generating more accelerating ARPU as you move throughout the year? I think that's going to be a big focus. I mean, overall, Netflix should be in a very strong position heading into the back half of the year. If you just think about it, all of these legacy media companies pulling back, cutting cost, cutting programming, reducing their marketing spend. They're all so desperate to show Wall Street profitability that they've sort of given up on trying to win the streaming wars. They're basically seeding the fact that Netflix has won, and that puts Netflix in a very strong, enviable position, especially as they're out there with a product. You know, the ad-supported Netflix is cheaper than all of these other services. That's a pretty impressive place to be right now for Netflix. All right, Rich, we're going to have to leave it there, but really appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. That was Rich Thank Greenfield, you. Lightshed Partners, Partner Media and Technology Analyst.